Good morning students. So far we have completed chapter 1 from unit 1. And now we are moving towards chapter 2 from unit 1. Okay. So before we look into this chapter 2, just we can do one review regarding this first chapter because second chapter is the continuation of first chapter. Fine. Okay. So in the first chapter we have discussed regarding this diversity in the living world. System of classification, taxonomy hierarchy, nomenclature and tools of taxonomy. Do you remember? Okay. So here and diversity in the living world we said regarding the various forms of animals which is found in this world. And in system of classification we have discussed there is various systems framed by this various scientists. For example, three domains of classification, five kingdom classification, six kingdom classification, seven kingdom classification. And in the taxonomic hierarchy, we discuss regarding this hierarchical order for classification such as kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Then nomenclature in the sense naming of these organisms. So assigning scientific name, right? And tools of this taxonomy. So here we said certain tools which is helping for this taxonomical studies. Okay. And in the second chapter, we are going to discuss about this. In the system of classification, we as per this five kingdom classification system, we said that this entire organism is classified as five kingdoms, right? Do you remember what are the five? Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia, right? In the second chapter, we are going to do the clear illustration regarding this last file, last kingdom that is Animalia. So, this chapter we are going to discuss regarding this kingdom animalia, right? So, we know already kingdom animalia consists of 10 phylums, right? So, the 10 phylums are Porifera, Coelenrata, Tenophora, Platyhelminthus, Nematoda or Ascalminthus, Annelida, Mollusca, Arthropoda, Echinodermata and Caudata, okay? So, unless you know these 10 phylum names, you cannot get any points for the forecoming topics because in this forecoming topic, we are going to discuss about these phylums only. Understand? So, first of all, you must know about these 10 phylums in order. That is very important. Why? Because, you know, each level is framed as per the character in the ascending order level. For example, Porifera is one phylum. This porifera body organization will be very simple. Okay. And the next one is cylindrata is little more advanced than porifera. Then phylum tenophora is little more advanced than cylindrata. Then platyhelminthus is little more advanced than the tenophora. Do you get me? In such a manner, in ascending order level, as per the body organization and function, these phylums are framed. So we have to learn it in order. Understand? So, let us see one by one phylum. So, you must to learn these 10 phylums, right? So, listen. Before we learn about the character of this each phylum, here they have included another one title called it is basis of classification, right? What do you mean this basis? Listen. In the last chapter we say, Scientists has classified the organism as various categories or kingdom, right? But in this chapter, we are going to learn kingdom animalia has classified as 10 phylums and this 10 phylum character we are going to learn in this chapter, right? So, this basis of classification explains how these 10 phylums are classified, at which manner, at which basis it is classified. Surely they may have considered certain characters, right? One simple example we could say invertebrates and vertebrates. What is the difference between these two? Invertebrates, there is no backbone. Vertebrates, there is a backbone. So one character they consider, right? The same. Here, basis of classification, they say is some characters. Some characters they have considered to classify these organisms. So this 10 phylum has classified as per these characters. Do you get me? So, let us see one by one. The first one is level of organization. Second one, diploplastic and triploplastic organs. And third one is patterns of symmetry. 
and fourth one sila and the next one is segmentation and notochord so as per this level they have given the classification of this kingdom animal here as 10 phylums shall we go one by one so level of organization means listen so now everyone knows even from the lower grade onwards we have learned so living things are made up of cells is it fine cells of course we know the protozoan single cellular organism to multicellular organism everything is made up of cells right and in as per the kingdom animalia kingdom animalia consists of only multicellular organisms okay then multicellular means what do you mean there is many cells are there and how these cells are organized or arranged as per this basis also they are classifying these organisms fine so how they are the how the cells are arranged right so let us see the classification the first one is cellular level of organization second one tissue level of organization third one organ level of organization and fourth one organ system level of organization so here we are going to learn how the cells are aggregated or arranged is it fine okay let us see the first one cellular level of organization okay here this is the basic level of organization as i said already we have we have arranged this 10 phylums in one ascending order level which means the first one is porifera its body arrangement is very simple so phylum to phylum this system may become complex do you get me so that's why listen the first two phylum is porifera so the porifera consists of cellular level of organization which means it is one of the multicellular organism only but it each cell is doing different function one cell is not depending another one so functionally each cell is isolated from each other do you get me so it is multicellular organism it is made up of multi cells but each cell is unique it is not depending another one cell for its function that is called cellular level of organization example we can say phylum porifera it's a first one example one example we could say it is sponges okay then look at the nearby picture this picture explains this wall of this porifera okay so the wall consists of two layers the outermost layer the brown color is pinacocyte right and this is giving support or shape to this uh, body wall as well as the innermost cell the yellow color is denoted as coanocytes so this is a flagellated cell can you notice the flagella is arising from there it is a flagellated cells and this is helpful for the movement of this water inside this sponges so that's why they said it is helpful for the digestion as well as for respiration understand so that's all about cellular level of organization next one is tissue level of organization so hope you know what is tissue right so what do you mean tissue so the group of cells which is doing the similar function is called tissue <coughs> the group of cells which is doing similar function is called tissue so here the group these organisms are made up of group of cells which means tissues which is doing the same function is called tissue level of organization so do you remember the phylum first one is porifera and the second one is coelenterata so here this coelenterata consists of tissue level of organization do you notice this system is becoming little more advanced do you understand okay so this is called tissue level of organization it is is present in this phylum coelenterata one example we can say hydra okay next one okay the next one is organ level of organization right so here you know so already group of tissue is making organ which is doing the one particular function right so here this kind of this organisms consist of some organs so each organ is doing in its role in its own function right okay so here and this kind of this organization first appeared in this phylum platyhelminthes one of the example we could say it is a platworm so this consists of certain organs this organ is doing in its function right 
so this kind of this organization is called organ level of organization right so the next one is organ system level of organization right so hope you knows about the various organ systems right you, that you may land in the slower classes that is maybe digestive system respiratory system circulatory system excretory system and so on right so many systems you knows right so what do you mean system one system may consist of group of organs which is doing the similar function right is called organ system so here i displayed one figure that is that explains the digestive system of human so do you know what are the organs comes under this digestive system of course mouth salivary glands esophagus stomach pancreas liver large intestine small intestine rectum anus these are all the organs are arranged to form an organ system so all those together it is doing one function it is called digestion okay so this organization is called organ system level of organization is it clear so this we could see from nematodes to chordates is it clear have you noticed the first one cellular level of organization is present in the first phylum porifera tissue level of organization is present in the cell and data then organ level of organization we could see in the platyhel minders an organ system level of organization is coming from the forcoming one that is nematodes to chordates is it clear okay then this organ system level of organization organization has some other character also for example so as we said organ system of organization consist of nematodes to chordates which means from lower level to higher level organ organisms are there under this right so that means some may consist of simple system and some may consist of complex system do you get me maybe for example nematodes may consist of simple organ system or chordate may consist of complex organ system also will be there so that they have explained here shall we see one of the character they said incomplete digestive system incomplete digestive system means here they said in case of platyhelm in this platyhelm in the cell so organ system level also will be there right so platyhelm in this one of the example they said flat form the digestive system consists of only a single pore that is called that will perform as a mouth as well as the anus can you see in this picture so one single hole is there the same hole will perform as as mouth as well as the anus so it is doing this two function so this simple level of organ organization is called it is incomplete digestive system is it clear this we could see in this lower level of this organisms but in the higher level of organization what do you mean complete digestive system is there in this higher level of organizations for example one of this example they said annelids so here they say the digestive system annelid earthworm digestive system here explained i right? then here is that it starts from the mouth can you observe this mouth so it start from mouth and end with anus can you observe the anus so this is called complete digestive system so in higher higher level of organization organisms the digestive system will be as completed one for example it starts from mouth and end with anus okay then one more example they said according the circulatory system so circulatory system also two type is there that is one is open type circulation another one is closed type circulation so open type circulation means here i explain one figure that is a circulatory system of cockroach it is this cockroach comes under the phylum echinodermata right so here what is there in this open type of circulatory system there is no blood vessels there is no capillaries will be found right so what will happen heart is there can you see chambers of heart we have marked there heart is filled with this blood without hemoglobin right but there is no blood vessels to supply this blood so that's why the chamber is fully it is filled with the tissues right so that type of this circulatory system is called open type of circulation so this we could observe in arthropods mollusks echinoderms and urochordates okay but in, in higher level of organi organisms we could see closed type of circulation can you see in closed type of circulation there will be the organ 
one central organ will be there then artery will be there veins will be there capillaries will be there to carry the blood that type of circulation is called closed type circulation can you differentiate in open type of circulation there is no artery and then there is no vein there is no capillaries to carry the blood but here there is uh, artery will be there vein will be there and blood capillaries will be there to transport the blood from one place to another one place okay so here this system of this closed type circulation is present in phylum annelids cephalocordates as well as vertebrates understand so so the first topic we have completed this level of organization there is level of organization consist of cellular level of organization tissue level of organization organ level of organization and organ system level of organization okay shall we go to the next next one is diploblastic and triploblastic organization so this also one of the character as per this character they are giving the classification for this animals understand okay so what do you mean diploblastic and triploblastic listen me so listen after fertilization what do you mean fertilization the fusion of the male and female gamete is called fertilization that you knows right so after fertilization it will convert as a zygote then zygote will develop as one embryo right this embryo will get covered with this some layers that layer is called germinal layer why it is called germinal layer because the organs of this particular animal will be developed from this germinal layer have you got me understand so here i have displayed one embryo structure with germinal layers the layers are ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm so from this layer only the organs for the animal will be developed is it clear so as per this they are classifying this organism so some animal may consist of only two layers example ectoderm and endoderm some animal may consist of ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm so from this the organ will be developed is it clear as per this basis they are going to classify this organisms understand so let us see the first one diploblastic organization so as i said already diploblastic organization means the embryo consists of only two germinal layer that is called diploblastic organization understand so here listen in this figure a diploblastic organization is given so the outer the purple color is called it is ectoderm and the innermost purple color cells are called as endoderm within these two one mesoglea is there it is undifferentiated layer the outer layer is called ectoderm and the innermost layer is called endoderm but this between these two one layer is there that is undifferentiated layer that is called as mesoglea understand so these kind of this organization is present in the beginning the lower grade of this phylum that is called porifera as well as the coelenterata understand okay so from this layer only the organism is going to produce a organ for example the ectoderm will be converted as a epidermis outermost layer of this organism understand then from the endodermis it will produce gas gastrodermis means digestive tract will be produced from this endoderm cells have you got me so that is called diploblastic organization next one is triploblastic organization so triploblastic organization means as i said already this embryo is covered with three germinal layers what are the three outermost is ectoderm innermost is endoderm and the middle one is called mesoderm understand so ectoderm endoderm as well as mesoderm so here so first one we said it is found in the coelenterates right but here porifera and the coelenterates we said but here platyhelminthes to chordate it consists of three layers platyhelminthes to chordate it consists of three layers okay from each layer the organs will be produced for example ectoderm will be converted as skin hair nail teeth as well as neuron also okay neuron is a structural and functional unit of nervous system okay and endoderm from the endoderm digestive system gut lungs liver will be produced right and from the mesoderm muscle bone heart will be developed is it clear so as per this also they are classifying this organism that is called diploblastic and triploblastic organization understand shall we go to the next 
and the next basis is patterns of symmetry patterns of symmetry what do you mean symmetry so if i say in simple manner we could able to get two equal halves of this organism when we cut it for example when we cut one butterfly in the central axis we will get to two equal halves right that is called symmetry understand so as per this body arrangement as per this arrangement or pattern the organisms will be classified that is called symmetry is it clear so let us see the type of this symmetry the first one is asymmetrical second one radial symmetry third one pentamerous radial symmetry fourth one biradially symmetrical and the fifth one is bilateral symmetrical understand so let us see one by one first one is asymmetry asymmetry in the sense we cannot divide this in this kind of this organism into two in any manner in any plan or in any direction do you understand me for example simple example we could say amoeba right amoeba is shapeless right shapeless so we cannot divide this amoeba into two in any direction am i right the same here pilum porifera listen pilum porifera example sponges they said look at the picture we cannot get any two equal halves in any direction it is called asymmetry understand okay shall we go to the next can one radial symmetry radial symmetry means when any plane passing through the central axis of the body divide an organism into two identical parts for example one organism is there we can able to divide this organism into two equal halves in any plane which means any direction in any axis do you get me so example they said hydra and sea anemone can you look at this picture so first one is sea anemone if you look if you cut the sea anemone in any, any direction we could able to get two two equal halves right the same hydra can you look at the hydra if we cut the hydra also in any any direction we could get this two equal halves it is called radial symmetry understand and especially this kind of this organisms as a character it is a cylindrical in shape am i right cylindrical in shape that's why it has only top and bottom alone there is no dorsal and ventral which means for example if you take one lizard uppermost region we we say it is a dorsal region lower most region we will say it is a ventral region and the head part we say we will say it is anterior region and the tail part we can say it is a posterior region but here there is no dorsal there is no ventral there is no anterior there is no uh, posterior there is no right side and there is no left side am i right so this is cylindrical in shape only top and bottom alone there understand so this kind of symmetry is called radial symmetry we can get two equal halves in any direction is it clear and pentamerous radial symmetry this also radial symmetry only but first one we said in any plan in any method we will get the two equal halves but here especially for starfish in five direction we will get two equal halves not in any direction only in five direction we will get the two equal halves that's why penda means five so they said it is a pentamerous radial symmetry this is especially present in the phylum echinodermata example starfish do you get me okay first one by radially symmetrical by radially symmetrical the first one radial symmetrical only we said right we can get two equal halves in any plane but here by radial symmetrical means only in two direction we will get two equal halves only in two direction we will get this two equal halves is called by radial symmetrical so how can we get this one lesson one of the example they said home jelly so this home jelly if we divide in only in two direction we will get two equal halves for example one is in a longitudinal but sagittal axis which means from head to tail another one is a longitudinal but in vertical axis from left to right in this two axis if we cut we will get the two equal half of this organism so this type is called biradial symmetry understand next one is bilateral symmetry 
bilateral symmetry means from platyhel minthus to chordates, this bilateral symmetry may occur, right? So bilateral means we can get two equal halves of this animal with only one plane alone, right? Only one plane alone. So platyhel minthus to chordates, everything has this bilateral symmetry. So here I displayed one of this example, insect. Insects comes under the phylum arthropoda. So we can able to get two equal half of this insect by only one direction or only one plane. It is called it is bilateral symmetry. Understand? And especially they said bilateral symmetry, not like the radial symmetry here. Dorsal side is there, ventral side is there. Anterior side is there, posterior side is there. Right side is there, left side is there, right? So all these directions are there for this um, bilateral symmetry animal. Understand? So we have completed the three characters so far. The first one level of organization, second one diploplastic and triploplastic organization and the third one we said patterns of symmetry. Okay, shall we go to the next basis? The next basis is coelom. Have you heard the word coelom? Coelom is a body cavity. What do you mean cavity? Empty space. That is called cavity. So coelom is a body cavity. So if the body consists of the cavity, is called it's a coelom. So some it may not be there, some it is really will be there, some it is a true will be there. So as per that they have classified the coelom. The first one is acelomate. Notice this one, acelomate. Second one, pseudocelomate. Third one is eucelomate. Acelomate means there is no cavity at all. That is called acelomate. So the it is example we can say phylum platyhelm in this. Whatever character we say, have you noticed whatever character we say, from phylum to phylum, this it, it is becoming little advanced. Have you noticed? Okay. The same coelom also. A coelom it means no coelom. So this no coelom character is found in the platyhel And next next phylum is ascalminthus. Ascalminthus consists of pseudo coelom. Pseudo coelom means there is no coelom is there, but it is not real coelom. That I will explain now. Next one, eucelomate. Eucelomate means real coelom will be there. Okay, and this eucelomate is classified as two, that is chizocelomate as well as enterocelomate, right? So, chizocelomate is present in the next phylums, Annelida, Arthropods and Mollusks. Enterocelomate is found in Echinodermata, Hemichordate as well as Chordates. Is it fine? So, let us see one by one. The first one, acelomates. Okay, so do you remember this diploplastic and diplo triploplastic organization? Diploplastic organizations means the embryo consists of two layers, ectoderm as well as endoderm. The middle layer is called mesoderm. It is no, it is a fluid-filled cavity, right? And uh, this this type of organism we said it is a diploplastic animals. Triploplastic means three layers will be there: ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Okay. Within this layer only, the cavity is going to form now. That's what we said. It is a coelom. Understand? Now let us see. A coelom it means can you observe this diagram? So there is three layer is there. The outermost layer is called ectoderm, and the center layer is called mesoderm, and the innermost layer is called endoderm. Right? So there is no coelom is found in these three layers. That's why they said it is a coelomate. Understand? Okay. Next one. Pseudo coelomate. Pseudo coelomate means coelom is there, but it is not not free. It is it is filled with some materials. Understand? So, can you watch this one? So, the first one, listen, outermost layer, yellow color is called it is a sectoderm, and the innermost layer, it is called it is a endoderm, and the middle blue color is called it is a mesoderm, but here, and this mesoderm is it is filled with this pseudo seal, which means pseudo seal fluid. It is filled with the fluid, it is not empty. That's why this it is a pseudo coelomate. Coelom is there, but it is not true. Is it clear? Okay. And the next one, eucelomates. So, eucelomates, listen me. Eucelomate also consists of the three layers. So, here clearly it is mentioned. The outermost layer is called ectoderm. And this innermost layer is yellow color which is mentioned as this endoderm. And the middle layer is called as mesoderm. Right? In this mesoderm layer, there is cavity is formed. That they have mentioned as coelom. The cavity is formed in this middle layer. So, this is called it is eucelomates. Understand? So, as per this also, they are classifying these organisms. 
So first one is ACL which is found in the lower grade of organisms that is called it is platyhelminthes. Then an ascalminthes consists of this zoodozela, right? Then the rest is consist of this eucela. Is it clear? Okay. Then this eucelum we are classifying as two we said. One is a chizocelamate as well as this enterocelamate. Chizocelamate means we said already the zelum is found from the mesoderm layer. Am I right? Okay. So here they said the same. So the mesoderm layer if this zelum is formed from the mesodermal layer is called chizocelamate. Is it fine? Have you noticed this figure? Outermost is ectoderm, yellow color is endoderm. And the pink color is a mesoderm. From the mesoderm layer, the cavity is produced in the second figure. That is called it is chizocelamates. Fine. And the next one is enterocelamates. In enterocelamate, can you see? Here also from mesoderm only, but the pouches of mesoderm, the pink color is being a mesa pouch. That is called archenteron part. Archenteron, they say, right? So the cavity is formed from this and Pouches of this mesoderm layer is called it is enterocelamate. Is it clear? Okay, so so that's all about the coelom. So first one is acelom, second one is eucelom, third one is eucelomates. Eucelomates consist of the two varieties. One is isocelomate as well as second one enterocelomates. Fine. Shall we go to the next? Next one is segmentation. Segmentation means the body is arranged as a segments, appendages is called segmentation, right? It may be in various forms. For example, some kind of the organisms, the entire body is covered with the segments and the segment will be repetitive, means the same segment, the size of the segments will be the same. The same segment will be repeated throughout the body. Understand? That is called metamerism, which we can observe in the earthworms. Okay, that is called segmentation. But in case of this cockroach, the segmentation is, the cockroach also made up of segments only, but segment by segment, the size may reduce and this, fun, and this various organs will be there present inside. Understand? Okay, that is called segmentation. Next one is notochord. Notochord means during the embryonic stage, do you remember the word embryo after fertilization? Zygote may form, zygote becomes embryo. Embryo consists of embryonic layer, we said, germinal layers. So during embryo, when the embryo grows, the embryo produces one rod-like structure that is called chordates. I'm sorry, that is called notochord, right? This notochord, as per the presence or absence of this notochord, the organisms are classified as two. That is, one is chordates, second one is non-chordates. Chordates means the organism which possesses this notochord is called chordates and the organisms which do not have notochord is called non-chordates. For example, chordate example we can see cephalochordates, urochordates as well as pieces to mammals. So cephalochordates and urochordates are the subphylums sub of these chordates, right? And pieces, amphibians, reptiles, Aves and mammals, these are the classes of vertebrates. So, pieces to mammal also, they said, it consists of this notochord. Okay. And the next one is non-chordates. Non-chordates means, of course, there is no notochord will be there. So, from phylum Porifera to Hemichordata, Porifera, Cylindrata, Platyhelminthes, Ascalminthes, Anelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata and Hemichordata. Till that, there is no notochord. Understand? Okay. So that's all about this. The first topic we have completed as basis of classification. So as per these characters, basic or as per the basic of these character, whatever we have discussed now, the animals are going to be classified. Right? Okay. So the next class we will discuss about this uh, character of this each file. Understand? How they have uh, noticed the character of this each file as per this character. Understand? Okay. Now let us see some assignments. So, may few three more questions I have given here. It is very easy to complete and you cover up these portions uh, within this next class. Okay. So, the first question is 
differentiate incomplete and complete digestive system. Next one, differentiate open and closed circulatory system. Then, differentiate dipolar plastic and tripolar plastic organization. Then, differentiate biradial and bilateral symmetry. Next one, differentiate isocelum as well as enterocelum. Is it clear? These are all these differentiations. It is clearly mentioned in the textbook that you can learn. Okay. Then one final question I included along with that. What that is? How are organisms are classified based on sila? Okay. This hope these are all very simple questions only, and cover up these portions before the next class. Hope you will cover, and we can meet in this next class. Thank you.